Hello and welcome back to Regimentals YouTube channel. Um, it's been a very busy few days here at Regimentals. We've managed to um, buy and be consigned some really good stuff. Most of it um, has been purchased from a very uh, good collection, a helmet collector um, here in the UK who's been collecting for many years. Um, and um, I want to basically show you all the stuff um, that's just come in. It's going to take a week or two for it to be listed onto the website. But if I run through the stuff very quickly with you, it will give you um, an advance of what's going to be coming up on the update. So I'll start off um, running through it very quickly. Um, here at the back, we managed to get a very nice um, pre-1914 Jaeger Souffert helmet. Really nice condition. This here is um, a British World War II paratroopers helmet, 1943 dated. The leather straps and a lovely netting cover over that. Um, as well as that, in the British paratrooper department, we got this really nice 1944 dated Denison smock. It's got lots of battle, battle wear and use, um, but again, I love that patina on those kind of things. Really nice to see them used. You can almost imagine where they've been. Here we have a um, Austrian World War I um, helmet, but it has a very, very late war, almost ersatz um, style chin strap. The, the fixing of the chin strap is very interesting. Um, then we have here an early French Foreign Legion um, colonial uh, pith helmet. A very rare piece. It's very hard to find anything French Foreign Legion and when we do find it, it sells very, very quickly. And here is a really beautiful Officer's World War One Brody helmet with an Officer's cloth cover. And on the side here is the, the regimental insignia of the Royal Leicestershire Regiment. Very nice to find any kind of Brodie with, uh, with covers. And this, this collector, he specialised in collecting all kinds of, of rare Brodie helmets. Um, that leads me on to this lovely piece, which is the private purchase British World War I helmet. Um, you see these, I think, in Campaign 1915, uh, the book that I published. Um, very similar to the Portuguese style, but they were private purchase, and it has a lovely Scots & Co label inside, Piccadilly, London. Really beautiful piece there with the, uh, with the strap going around the edge here and the chin strap, really nice. Now this is nice, look at that lovely tin there, Royal Engineers, let's have a look inside. It's almost like an unboxing. So here it is, it's a lovely Woolsey, Woolsey helmet with the lovely Royal Engineers flash on the side, really nice, oh, and a Hawks & Co um, uh, manufacturer stamp inside, really nice, beautiful thing. Looking at the back here, there's a Brody helmet, it has no insignia on it, but it's lovely condition, a beautiful strap, very strong and sturdy. It's probably the one of the best looking Brodies that I think I've seen in a long time in terms of condition. Here is a, uh, an M43 cap, World War II German, very, very well used, lovely warm piece. Um, then here is another officer's Brody helmet. Look at the condition of that. Look how the age is coming through with the rust spots there coming through under the cover and a lovely, lovely uh, Hawks private purchase officer's uh, liner inside there. It's a beautiful piece. Now this is one of the rarest pieces we managed to get. This is a, uh, a wire cutter set, World War I, but it's Italian Stormtroopers. Yes, yeah, so the Italian Stormtroopers, they were known as the Arditi, and this is a very rare piece of equipment. Um, I really have no idea yet how much I'm going to ask for that, but for the Italian Stormtrooper collector, that will be a prized possession. Now this is quite interesting. I have no idea when it was made. Uh, it, could be, it could be a reproduction, it could be uh, post-war, it could be a reenactor's piece, but I personally think it is a prisoner of war item. Um, it's uh, a German peaked field cap made out of the tan and water German sniper's uh, smock. A really lovely piece and it has real age to it as well. One of those things that's really hard to price. We managed to get lots of sets of uh, uh, German World War II gloves and then this here is a very special piece. Now I am working at the moment with Oliver Locke um, on a book um, specifically 
about German um, World War I headdress or, or German World War I helmets. And this actual helmet is going to be in that book. And this, as you can see, is known as the square dip. So I've spoken about these before in my videos. The rim of the helmet here, it takes a significant square type dip down at the bottom rather than the, the regular swooping style. So it becomes known as the square dip. They're, they're, they're uh, documented well in the book um, Feldzug 1916 by Michael Baldwin. And they do have their own unique liner as well. And all the features of that liner can be seen in that book. Really nice piece. I've seen these sell at auction for over £3,000. Uh, I think I sold one years ago for £4,000. So this one will be um, in that price range, but a very, very special piece. So another nice piece uh, in this collection of headdress was this British uh, O2 stiff top cap. Um, uh, not to be confused with the, the, the normal trench cap, this is the stiff top version, the early O2. Um, these are selling now for, for really good prices. Uh, it's got Royal Warwickshire insignia to the front. Very nice piece. Okay, this again, another Brodie. Really nice World War I Brodie. Uh, private purchase liner, but it has General's uh, insignia on the front. Anything um, for a general is really hard to find, but to have a Brodie with the, with the uh, general's insignia on the front is actually really quite special, really nice. Here we have a um, Royal Artillery Brodie, World War II, but it has the Malta style camouflage. Um, I've seen this before, it's known as the Malta style, really nice with, the, with a nice clear deco on the side there. Uh, this looks to me like a World War I Brodie helmet, but with a thick sand paint uh, finish on it. Really nice texture on there. Here we have a uh, Saxon uh, Reserve Enlisted Man's Pickle Harbour. And the nice thing about this is the condition. And inside there is a beautiful Dresden uh, maker stamp and dated 1913. But Saxon Reserve is extremely hard to find. This here, a really nice um, artillery, German World War II artillery officer's cap, very big size and really good condition as well. Moving down the line here, this is a um, uh, First World War British uh, East Lanx uh, shoulder rank shooting. Now I think this has been converted from a cuff rank um, into a shoulder rank, uh, but look at this lovely insignia on the side, the number five. Lovely age on there, nice, you know, leather pads on the on the uh, elbows, wound stripes. Um, a really nice piece that that would look lovely on a mannequin. Um, moving down the line here, ah, now these we've had a few of these recently, but they are extremely rare. This is the World War II British cruise visor helmet. So yeah, um, as you know, these were used by the British um, Expeditionary Forces. Um, in the early part of the war in France. It has the strap there on the back, but it's the visor which is the rare part. And uh, to have one um, which originally fixed onto the helmet is actually really nice. Really nice. Now this here, um, eagle-eyed people will notice straight away, German World War I enlisted man's uh, 1910 trousers. Really beautiful condition, almost mint condition. But what's really nice about these if you look here on the on the front, they have no buttons on the fly section. So these are actually unfinished by the tailor. These have come straight out of the, the, the warehouse unfinished. There's no stampings inside, uh, but you can see by the quality of them that they are original. The copies are quite crude and, and not very well made, but this is a beautiful unfinished pair of trousers. They will be on sale on our website for about 1,800 pounds. That is how much German uh, World War One enlisted man's trousers can sell for. So moving down the line again, we have here uh, flak. This is uh, German World War Two Hitler Youth flak tunic. Uh, sometimes worn by women, sometimes worn by the Hitler Youth. And inside the pocket here is the insignia that was on it, and it's been left in the pocket there all these years. Really nice to find those kind of like pieces, you know, hidden away inside them. Here is a World War One uh, artillery. French artillery um, officer's Adrian helmet, but it's had the Lieutenant Bars um, added to the front there to, to give it its rank. 
really nice to see um, a little addition like that. And then here's another officer's Adrian helmet. This is the Colonial. Um, it's got the RF on the front there for Republic of France. Um, the half uh, crescent moon there. Lovely, lovely brown colour. That really is what signifies the, the colonial look, is, is, the, is the brown paint on there. Uh, now this is one of the super pieces in the collection, which I think, uh, once this video goes live, I will be inundated with, um, with customers um, after this. Now my problem is, is that I have two customers straight away in my head, they know who they are, who will want this helmet. Um, I haven't thought of a price yet. When you find something like this, how do you, who do you choose to go to? How do you choose who to offer it to? I don't like auctioning items, um, but I, I'm just finding it really hard to, to decide on a price for this helmet and, and, and how I'm going to sell it. This is a First World War Brody helmet for the South Wales Borderers. Everybody knows the history of the South Wales Borderers with their connection um, in the Boer War, um, the film Zulu, um, Rourke's Drift. But this is a, a World War I um, helmet with their beautiful insignia to the front there. Um, the liner has a little bit of wear, uh, the strap is good condition, but that will be a very, very hot piece which people are desperate to get their hands on. Um, moving on through uh, back into World War II, we have some herringbone twill uniforms, a grey uh, padded suit worn by the Army and the SS. Uh, and then here I have a selection of um, uh, straps for the MG34 or 42 machine gun. These will be on sale on the website one at a time. I'll list one at a time. Um, they'll be selling for about £110 a strap. Um, oh, there and under here, I quite like this. This is the um, padded uh, reversible anorak, um, usually known as splinter pattern, but as you can see by the texture or the, or the style of this camouflage, this is the the blurry one, I think it's kind of known amongst collectors as blurry edge or something. Um, but the, um, the the pattern and the fact that it is it is that style of camouflage will be um, what makes it sell. It's, it's, it's quite a hard pattern to find. So that's all the stuff, um, or some of the stuff that's going to be going onto the website in the next few weeks. Um, gives you a kind of a preview idea of what you're going to see. If there's anything here that you are interested in, I will do my best to send you photographs of it. Um, I prefer sending photographs by telephone, um, sending it by email. It takes a bit, it's a bit, bit time consuming and hard to get your camera out, start connecting it to your computer. So it's easier for me to do it by phone. Moving on, um, I wanted to just feature um, one special item which I saw um, sell recently. Um, Many years ago, around 1980, my father um, was very fortunate to handle um, a cap and a brown shirt uh, worn by Adolf Hitler. We didn't buy it, uh, we were offered it, we um, had a role in negotiating a home for it uh, back in those days. Um, but I saw recently that Adolf Hitler's cap and shirt with tie came uh, back on the market in, in an auction in Germany recently. So I saw that the, um, the set um, sold for over a million euros. I think the cap uh, was in one lot, which sold for, I think, 450,000 euros, and the shirt and, and tie um, sold for 550,000 euros. Um, and if you watch my first ever video that I did, which is called The History of Regimentals, in that video, it shows a photograph of my father with the uniform. Um, looking very retro with his 1980s hairstyle. Um, so I, mean, I have the auction catalogue here and I just thought it would uh, be really good to, 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 to you know, let you know that how much some of these um, personality items are selling for now. Um, I'll show close-ups um, pictures um, in the video of these items so you can see it. But it's, it's nice to follow the history, and that item that we had all those years ago, 1980, um, to see it now finding a new home at that amazing price of over a million euros. Okay, so um, talking about the past and the fact that we um, handled the, the uniform from Adolf Hitler all those years ago, it led me on to um, rummaging through some boxes to find um, another piece of history. And I'm really looking forward to this feature because um, it's, for me personally, it's a really 
interesting thing. And for many of our old, old customers, you know, you'll find it quite interesting. I managed to find all of the old regimentals catalogues. So um, as most people know, our business started in about 1977, 1978. And one of the secrets of our success was that even back then, when we first started, we, we, we had a like a, a two yearly catalogue um, listing all of our stuff. And we built up a database of customers all around the world. And we kept those customers as mail order customers. And those same customers started buying from our website. And they've been, some of them have been with us all the way through that journey. And finding these old catalogues, um, it's really fun to look through at some of the interesting pieces we've had over the years. Um, and the prices, uh, fascinating to see the prices. But what I wanted to show you is, is this one here, this first ever uh, catalog that we did. It's, it's got written in pen on in my dad's hand here, 1978 or 1979. He can't even identify what year this was. Um, and it's basically just a hand typed list of, of items. Um, the descriptions are nothing like what they are now. You know, nowadays, not only do we have um, 10, 15, 20 photographs of an item, we have a detailed description of its condition as well. Uh, back then, um, you know, the description, it would, it would be M35 double decal helmet, finishing Africa core paint. The decals are visible beneath the finish, uh, the liner and strap, probably worn in Tunisia or Southern Italy. That was the description. Um, now everyone knows that an M35 helmet, tropical M35 helmet now, um, with both decals showing would be over 1800 pounds, maybe 2000 pounds, maybe even more. Um, this one here was on sale in 1978 for 60 pounds. Um, that just shows you, that just one item just shows you how the prices have changed over the years. Um, mo moving on, here's another one. Um, it, it seems like the front cover's missing, but the, the first page here says, uh, since my last catalogue was published in August of 1979, I had the good fortune of to purchase an already existing well-known military shop in Islington. I mean, so that can date this, this, uh, this catalogue here to about 1978, I would say. First item I turn to, World War I, 1916 camouflage helmet with three pad liner and chin strap, 62 pounds. I mean, the length of the description tells you there was not many copies around in those days, but here's another one. German World War II double decal Luftwaffe M35 helmet with 85% of its dark green finish remaining, 55 pounds. This is an interesting one. German World War II paratrooper single decal helmet with slotted screws and air vents. Swastika scratched off the decal, 190 pounds. Well, an Af um, a paratrooper helmet nowadays with its swastika denazified is still gonna be 3,000 pounds at least. 1943 dated British paratrooper helmet, all original paint with webbing chin straps, 30 pounds. So just to briefly show you, all these catalogues here, 1981, 1982, 1983, 19, oh, 1988, um, and then eventually we moved on and got a, a little bit more elaborate with these really, really attractive uh, yellow uh, covered catalogues. These are probably all early 90s. Um, and just some of the stuff that you see that we had inside is, is quite fascinating. While sorting through these catalogues, I found this, which is actually a duplicate. So I have two copies of the November 1982 Regimentals catalogue. And I want to do something special with it. And I thought, shall I auction it and give the money to charity? Or shall I give it away uh, in a prize? But I couldn't think of a way to, to do the giveaway. So I, I thought my original idea was the best. That I'm, what I'm going to do with this, I'm going to ask you guys to contact me with your offer for this catalogue. Um, however much I get for it, I'm going to donate that to um, a charity that we support, which is called Help the Heroes. Uh, it's, a, it's a British based charity to help our, our war veterans. So get in touch, either um, leave a comment on the YouTube video, email me, text me with your offer for the Regimentals 1982 sales catalogue. 
and uh, it will be really interesting to see how much we end up donating to charity. So some of you might have noticed when I was featuring the items that we've just bought in, um, in the background there was a really nice um, item hanging up um, um, in the backdrop. And so I just wanted to finish the video by featuring this, which will be on the next update. It is um, a Waffen SS Panzer wrap over for an officer. Um, special pieces like this don't come along very often. This is gonna be on our website on Friday for 7,500 um, pounds. I actually want one for myself, but I just can't, I just can't afford it at the moment. So unfortunately this piece is gonna have to be um, put out there for sale. Very, very rare. Um, it will be, as I said, on the update on Friday, www.regimentals.co.uk. Uh, don't forget, like the video. Um, please follow us on Facebook. And last but not least, don't forget, if you're interested in um, making an offer for the 1982 Regimentals catalog, um, whatever you pay for that catalog, we will donate that money straight to help the heroes. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.